Have you ever had somebody call you a fascist or a socialist and have the conversation move forward in a positive direction? Probably not. That kind of language, that kind of name calling pretty much puts a kibosh on any kind of positive communication. We live in a country that is populated by over 325 million people. The world is populated by over 7 billion people, yet our egos are so big that we believe our opinions to be the only ones that are valid. Our egos are so fragile that when somebody merely disagrees with us on an issue or has the audacity to vote differently than us for a candidate, we are incredibly inf offended. We are so offended that the first thing we do is grab our device, or if our laptop and terminal are close by, we start typing. And we type the most clever, angry message we can totally ridiculing the offending party. That does two things. The first thing it does is it allows us to get it off our chest, and it allows us to get it off our chest in a way to where we don't actually have to confront the person, and we don't actually have to defend our views. The best part of it is we've got a lot of friends that agree with us, and those friends are going to see what we posted, they're going to either like it, or they're going to put a positive comment on it, and we're going to feel really good. There's a tragedy to all that, though. We are losing our ability to engage in debate. We are losing our ability to learn from disagreements by finding the nuances of somebody's argument. The worst part is, day by day, we are severing our relationship with half of our fellow citizens. Let me say that again. Day by day, we are severing our relationship with half of our fellow citizens. It doesn't have to be that way. John Fry is the president of Drexel University. He studied this issue, and he suggests that people spend less time on social media and more time talking with each other face to face. Liberals and conservatives can learn a lot from each other just by hearing each other out and hearing each other's arguments. Empathy and respect will go a long ways to bridging our current political divide. I'm going to give you a couple of things to do after this show. The first thing I'd like you to do is I'd like you to go to YouTube. I know I was talking about the evils of social media, but if you go to YouTube and you type in President Obama delivering the eulogy at Senator Kennedy's memorial service, and then type in the name Orrin Hatch, you'll find something interesting. You will find that President Obama talks about the example those two senators set, set in having a bipartisan relationship which, if you followed Senator Kennedy and Senator Hatch, was amazing because they are just two totally different people. One's very conservative, one is very liberal, yet they were able to disagree on the issues they were passionate about, but they were able to find common ground. And as it ended up, they were better for it, and the country was better for it. Now, after you watch the video, I'd like you to look at your own life. Because although I cited President Obama and then Senators Kennedy and Hatch, the solutions aren't going to come from Washington. It starts with us. And I want you to think about your neighborhood, the neighborhood across the street from you that every election season has a sign up you don't like. And you look at that neighbor, and you look at them kind of funny because they're wrong. Well, the fact of the matter is, you never know what you and that neighbor have in common. And that neighbor might be the one that, on the day it's raining, 
and your kids are locked out of the house, that might be the safe house they go into until you get home from work. But that's not going to be the house they go into if you and your neighbor are calling each other radical or ideologue. That neighbor might also be the one that helps you when you're late for work. On the day when you're going to get fired if you're late again, again, you won't get that help if your neighbor and you are calling each other names. So it starts with us. And as my Toastmasters friend said this morning, we're going to have our differences, but we should respect our differences while we appreciate what we have in common.